What's up, everybody? Y'all ready to get this thing rolling? Y'all ready to get this thing rolling? Happy Monday! Yeah! We're going to get this week started off. Yeah, we're going to get this week started off right. What's up, Peaches? Val, you Val. What's up, Deb? Leandra? Deb was in the house first tonight. What's up, Deb? Hey, Ken. You ready to get it in? On this Monday. Uh huh. What's up, Brittany Ashton? How you doing, Britt? Britt, Britt. Value Val Bates. Kanita. <coughs> My main man, Jason, spinning in the house. Kristen Rule. What's up, Kristen? Been watching. Oh man, it's the first one you caught. All right, hang on tight. Tan made 007 USA. There you go. Talk to him, Leandra. Uh huh. Deb, value, bow. And peaches. <laughs> Lovely peaches in the house, y'all. My main man, Daniel Vino. What's up, Daniel? Kanita. Uh huh. What's up, Leandra? Leandra. Leandra. <laughs> What's up, Patricia? Patricia Trotter. Yeah. What's up, Lou C313? Heidi. What's up, Heidi? Heidi D. Doris, I see Doris came in the house tonight. How you feeling tonight, Doris? There you go. Julia Graham. I see you. What's up, Phil Brad? <clears throat> you ready, Peaches? Y'all ready? Put your hands in the air if you ready. <laughs> ah. What's up, Kendall Irvin? Simone. Melinda. Angie P. Portia O. Heidi D. Value Val. King of McLean, King Bear Simmons, Deb Miss Ash, Trayvon Kenny <clears throat> from the Glen Arden crew. <laughs> uh, Tyree. <clears throat> What's up, Deidre? Rhonda Leggett. What's up, Rhonda? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Michael Garza. Everything Martina Maria. Alexander Blinn. Simply beautiful. Oh, oh. Uh-huh. Y'all all come in here. Y'all know what to do. Hit that like button. You know it. Hit that like button. Y'all better hit that like. <clears throat> hit that like button, y'all. Everybody in the chat, hit the like button. Tell me you like it. So we can get on in. How y'all like that title in here tonight? Divine Gemini 71. What's up, Yolanda Barti? RS in the house. Ted Berry, what's up, Ted? 
Kathy, oh! Hey, Kathy, how you feel tonight, Kat? Kat? Woo, they lose control. Jason said it, y'all. He start loving on you. He's about to have a disaster. Hardeep Sadu. What's up, Hardeep? Renee Ellis. Uh-huh, Serena Jean Lewis. <sighs> All right, y'all. Hit the like. Smack the like. Punch the like. Step on the like. Dance with the light. Karate chop the light. Y'all hit that like button so we can get this thing cracking right now. Y'all ready to get it in? Because I'm ready, man. Woo! We're going to talk about this control freak tonight. Because that's what it is. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And we're going to get our riding music together. Because you know what? <clears throat> I like to. I like something in the background, you know. When I'm riding, you know. <laughs> yeah. There we go. How y'all like the title? How y'all like that title tonight? Ah! <laughs> Peaches, it was Hoover City. You was in Hoover City this weekend, Peaches. <laughs> they just, y'all, just when you thought they left you alone. <clears throat> Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk to y'all tonight, man. Uh huh. 15 months, Serena. There you go. 15 months. <clears throat> I know that's Hoover City over there. Everybody, come on in and relax because uh, we about to ride on, we about to ride on this narc. About to do a drive by. Hey, Jessica. Mm hmm. <clears throat> where Glow 60 Glow at? And where is Nettie? Nettie had. You had Nettie. Fiercely made. <laughs> where my main man Mark at? You know, family want us to get started without them. All right, y'all. That's how y'all going to act. That go glow 60 glow. Mm, I knew it. Yeah. Woo. So y'all see the title tonight? What's up, Rhonda? <laughs> y'all see the title for tonight? <clears throat> if the narcissist cannot control you, that entanglement is over. It's over. Ain't no relationship. No entanglement no more. What you're not going to do is be in control in a narcissistic entanglement. What you're not going to do is be in control in a narcissistic entanglement. For any of y'all that think that a narc, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, that's where we're going to start. Because for some reason, everybody, <laughs> everybody, Peaches, mwah. thanks for the super chat, Peaches. You like that new video? Hey, that's what we're talking about. <clears throat> Yeah, we're going to talk about that new supply. Yes. Yes, indeed. 
That's part. You know what? The new supply is part of narcissism. You literally don't really have a narc. I, I, you really don't have a narc if they don't have a new, another supply. Honestly, not the kind I'm talking about. <clears throat> nah. Oh, they got a new supply. Hanging around somewhere. That's a part of narcissism. New supply. That's why we talk about it so much. Because they always have one. And they always want to take you through all this craziness because they have some. They have at least one, but usually they have several. <clears throat> it's a part of who they are. If y'all knew how much stress you're going through is based on a new, another supply, that's why a lot of us takes a lot longer to move forward on this because the signs are there. Mm -hmm. Signs are right there. But we just don't believe it's sitting there thinking it's no way this person is in this house telling me they love me, telling me how much I mean to them and all of this stuff. And they go into another supply every day. No, it's no way they're doing that. A lot of us don't believe how trifling and treacherous this narc is, y'all. A lot of us do not believe. We don't want to believe it. We don't want to believe that this person is who they are, who they are showing us they are. We don't want to believe it. Real talk. We don't want to believe it. There go Lady B. What's up, Lady B, UK? <clears throat> Millionaire Bosses Podcast. What's up, lady? <clears throat> she came in the house saying hello to everybody. Everybody say what's up. So Simply Beautiful. Hey, Simply Beautiful, that's what I'm... That, okay, believe it. Because it's real. It's real. What, <laughs> tell me this. Tell me this, y'all. What other reason do they have but just starting stuff. What other reason do they have? Y'all sitting back, everything is chill. You know, your house is absolutely peaceful when the narc isn't starting something. The only time your house is not peaceful is when the narc <clears throat> decides, hey, I, I got something else going on. I got something else going on and I'm going to need to get over there to that. So I'm going to start some bull crap right here with you. I'm going to start something right here with you. Listen, y'all. Listen. Every time, 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 every time you go through something with that narcissist, Every time you go through something with that narcissist, I'm going to say it three more times. Every time. <laughs> every time. Every time you go through something with this narcissist, it's because they are cheating. <laughs> That's it. They got something else going on. Every time. They ain't starting nothing with you just for the hell of it. But they got you thinking that. They got you thinking that they're legitimately, reasonably starting something with you. And, and, and we get so tied up and caught up into it because they're so in, such incredible actors. We start really questioning ourselves like, damn, is my name really hurry up? Is it, it, are we really on a live chat? Maybe, maybe we're not on a live chat. You start questioning You start questioning the color of your bedroom, the pillows, the pillowcases. They got you believing that it's you. Every time the narcissist starts an argument, every time they start some craziness, every time you're going through something with them, it's because they're trying to get to this other supply 
It's because they're cheating on you. It's because they don't want you to see them and what they're doing. They don't want you to find out what they're doing because you're possibly going to break it up. You're going to run interference. <clears throat> Woo! Everything Martina Maria. <laughs> she said, the new supply got my number and started calling me on video talking about she on my side. <laughs> Whoo, man. Mm. See what I'm saying? Oh, she's like, I'm like, ma'am, I don't know you. I don't know you. And you know what? You know what, Maria? <clears throat> She knew about you. She knew about you talking about she on your side. She knew about you. She just thought he wasn't going to run the game on her like he ran it on you. She thought she was in control of something. She was thinking, nah, nah, no, he, nah, ain't no way. Nah, he ain't about to run that on me. Because he was telling her that you was coming up short. There go Myrna. What's up, Myrna? He's telling her you was coming up short. You wasn't treating him right. You, you're not doing everything. You, you don't understand him. See, she don't really. This, this is what the conversation went like, though. It's, man, she, you know, uh, she just don't really get me. She don't understand me. You know, it's like, you know, I, I'm telling her, look, I want us to do this. She, He's actually telling her ideas you gave him okay to make it seem like little things like you wanted to do you know he ran to her with all the ideas you gave yeah that's that's what the conversation was about so that when he ran to her because he know you're gonna be checking his social media stuff like that so when he runs over there to her He's throwing stuff right back at you, and you don't see it at, at the time, but you do get to see it later. You do get to see it later. He's back over there just, you know, he got her in a position where he's like, hey, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's go to the beach. I want to hold hands. We're going to walk the beach. We're going to hold hands. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do all of these things, right? <clears throat> All of the kind of stuff you wanted him to do with you, he ran off to do it with her. So this is the thing. This is how you destroyed it, though. See, so many of us don't understand the power is in your hands. Power's in your hands at, at, at the discard stage. Power's in your hands, people. Power's in your hands. When you are able to cut that narc off, leave them alone. They don't. Oh, oh, you carry me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You won't be able to contact me when you do that. That narc gotta come back. They gotta come back. They gotta have somebody they can torture at all times. They do not have control over their belligerent attitude. They don't have control over that monster that dwells inside of them. They don't have control over that, y'all. Satrina so Rose, mwah, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate you. They don't have control over that monster that dwells within. So if you cut them off, when they run off to the other person and you don't let them just come running back, See, people, they need, when a narcissist leaves you and runs to somebody else, they need your assistance. And that's a part that most people do not see. They need your help to bond with that other person. They need your help. They need your help. They need you to participate. They need you to feel sorry for them while they torture you. They need you to help them secure the other supply. 
you have to be the one that takes all of the 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 the, the negative attitude, all the trash talking. You're the one who got to deal with the negative side of this, so that they have somebody to dump on. Listen, y'all. They do not have control over that monster in them. Okay? They do not have control over it. They need you. They need you to assist them in that entanglement. When you cut them off, they have to give that negative to the other supply. And that's why they're usually pissed off with you immediately after it's over you don't they don't ran over there and you're like okay cool 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 you're not getting back over here nah i had enough of your mess see now they got to give all that negative to the other person but see a lot of us don't really believe that or just didn't know that so we'll continue to keep an open conversation we'll keep open communication we'll keep the entanglement open we do we keep the entanglement open and because we keep it open that allows the narc to dump on you they have to have somebody they're going to dump on listen when they go to the new supply the new supply has gotten devalued don't get it wrong because the new supply has to show that they can take that torture the way you take it they have to be able to show that a narcissist is not going to leave and a, 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 a grade A supply, they're not gonna leave, they're not gonna leave their home to go over here, you know, with somebody that they have no idea of how this person conducts themselves. They have no idea if this person's gonna be able to take this craziness. They know they're going to give this person craziness. They already know I'm a, they're gonna lie, they're gonna cheat, they're gonna steal, they're gonna do everything they did to you to this other person, and they're gonna do it worse to the other person. The other that's right. The other person is going to get it worse than you got it. So they have to have a certain kind of personality in order for this to work. They have to have a personality, a certain type of personality for this narcissist to feel that secure. They have to feel secure, you know, and don't get me wrong. The narcissist calls it wrong every time, every time. But this is what the narc is thinking. They're thinking in the back of their mind that, hey, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And, 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 oh, they take punishment good. They like the game. They like how I'm playing them. They like it. That's what the narc is thinking. Oh, they like it. They love how I'm torturing them, carrying them like, you know, like they're nothing. So they jump out there with the new supply. They run to the new supply. They feel like the new supply has shown themselves worthy of endless torture because that's what they're looking for that's what they saw in you that's what they saw in all of us this person is a thinker <laughs> a thinker when i do something crazy they're gonna be thinking about it instead of reacting to it now yeah we've been taught you shouldn't just react to things yes you should react to things when somebody does something disrespectful to you you should react to it you should not sit there and be thinking about it. Hold up then. Let me think about how to be calm. Forget being calm. That's how narcs get you. When you hold up, let me try to figure out how the way to be, you know, be calm about this. What you need to be calm for with somebody disrespecting you? Huh? Somebody has just crossed your boundaries. Why are you trying to figure out how to be calm? You know why? That was another trick of this devil. That's another trick of the devil. Don't do to me what I'm doing to you. Let me do what I want to do to you. And while I'm doing what I want to do to you, you feel sorry for me because I told you this lie that I was, you know, I suffered as a child and I went through things and I this and that and and you feeling sorry for them. You're feeling sorry for that monster. While they torture you. They got you in a crock pot cooking you every day. 
while they're running right over here to this other person like it ain't nothing. And, and you're thinking, ain't no way. I sacrifice too much. I do too much for this person. This person needs me too much. And yes, they are. Every single time they get a chance, y'all. Every time this nar gets a chance and they run in, they run in behind your back every single day. You can't trust this narcissist no further than you can throw a 10 ton banana. You cannot trust them for anything. You sitting in the bed, you sleep. That narcissist is over there woke, pretending they're asleep. And they're looking at you while you're sleeping. While you're sleeping, they right on the other side of the bed in their phone. They're waiting for you to go to sleep. Once they hear that you're asleep, man, they typing and texting and all kind of stuff going on. They sexting right next to you. You ain't getting none, but the person on the phone is. The person on the phone getting it all. They doing it right beside you. See, that's the thing I want y'all to see, that that's the monster that you're dealing with. You're not dealing with somebody who really you just want to cheat on you and, and, and just, you know, they just funny with it. it. They making a joke out of it. It's just cute to them. No, they, they not just that sexual. No, they're not. They're doing it, and they're doing it because... The, the thrill that the narcissist gets out of this, y'all, it, it's even sicker than anything you would think. You would think, okay, they just sex addicts, right? No, 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 they're not. No, because if they were, you you right there, you right there to take care of all of that for them. They're denying you of what they're running to this other person with. So then they throw that other thing in your face. Oh, you insecure or, or, or you, you don't do what this other person is doing for me. Or... See, see, the reason I'm telling y'all that's a bunch of bull is why, so why they always come back? If it ain't bull, then why do they always come begging back? If the sex was so incredible, fantastic, world and life changing, if it was so great, then why the hell they always come back every time? Why do they come back every time? Huh? Singing that old song, I, I was wrong. I, I, I was, I, I, I acted prematurely. I, uh, I want my family back. You know, you're the only one for me. You, you know, you know, we share too much to let everything go. We don't spend too much time for us to let go. Come on. There you go, Kinga. I miss you, boo. <laughs> What's Sam to say? Hey, big head. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. There you go. You my wife. <laughs> you know you my wife. You know you my wife. Uh-huh. You know you really my wife. Oh, baby, you know you my husband. All of that, they give you, they going to give you all of that, people. They going to give you all of that. Everything, they going to give you everything from top to bottom. But all I'm saying is, when they, were, when they got busted with the other supply, they was shutting you down. They was telling you how, how you weren't enough for them. They were telling you that I, I just, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> they was running game people. And then when they saw that situation, see, again, y'all, the narc always leaves with the same lie. Let's be friends. Let's be friends. Can we be friends? Huh? Can we be friends? Please. <laughs> Can we be friends? All I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, 
it's the same broken record. They ain't invented nothing new. The only difference right now is, is that we see them. <laughs> right now we see them. We see who they are. We see what they're about. We know who they are. They know that we know. And now they have to go and find people that are not aware. They, they're looking for people who, who have soft boundaries. People who aren't as, you know, people who aren't as serious about crossing that boundary. You know, that's it. That's it. That's all it's about, y'all. That's all it's about. They're looking for people who are going to let them be them. They're looking for people who are going to join the party. People who are going to let them come in and destroy. That's it. They're basically saying, will you please let me come back home so that I can terrorize you, so that I can finish tearing the rest of your heart out. I see I left a little bit. I want to tear it out of you. Mm-hmm. Everything is on the table with the narc. Listen, y'all. That narcissist, if they cannot control you, the entanglement is over. That's the reason why a narcissist will never love you or anyone. You hear me? Any, anybody. They're never going to love anybody. They're never going to love anybody because love is an emotion to them. It's an action. It's an action to us. To them, it's an emotion. And they feel it's weak. They feel like you love them, so that's how they can control you by bringing you pain. They control you because you don't want to hurt. You don't want that pain. So they're going to control you through your feelings for them. They know your feelings for them. And they'll tell you, they get so bold, they get so crass and so bold, that they start to tell you, I don't know why you're with me. They're going to say little stuff like that to you. You know what I'm about. They get bold and disrespectful. If I was you, I wouldn't mess with me. You crazy, you crazy for dealing with me. Why? See, they get the, that's how confident they get. See, if somebody can tell you something that crazy, that I don't even know why you're with me. They're exercising your feelings toward them. They're using those feelings against you. They're using your feelings against you. And they're just coming straight out bold with it. The mask is completely off. And people, that's how you know right then and there, that the discard has begun. When they take the mask completely off, they're saying, hey, this is who I am. You know I don't care about you for real. We both know who is doing what in here. We both know that I'm the one doing to you all the dirt. We both know that if I wanted this relationship to be about anything. It would be good. This relationship is bad because of me. That's how indignant this monster will get with you. <laughs> I had to get y'all that one. That was one that was given to me. <laughs> I, If this relationship, if I wanted this marriage to be good, it would be. This marriage is trash because I made it this way. Those are words I heard. <laughs> I had to go down memory lane one time for y'all. Good God. Yeah. When the mask comes off, people, 
when the mask comes completely off, they're going to say something to you so foul, so treacherous. They're going to they give you nothing to hang on to. They're saying at this point, you have nothing to hang on to. Nothing. They have, I've told you that I'm terrorizing this entanglement. Period. You have nothing to hold on to with the narcissist. That's what that's where they're going to take you. And the minute you cut them off, they begging and plead. <laughs> Woo, y'all, we're going to drag this monster tonight. <laughs> Rhonda Powell, mwah, thanks for the super chat, Rhonda. Beautiful one. Thanks for the super chat, beautiful one. Mwah. Hold up. There we go. Beautiful one said, I even gave in and accepted all the cheating. That, that didn't even work. <laughs> listen, y'all. Listen. Even if you even if you say okay to the cheating, it still ain't gonna get you past that. People, you, you can't make it with this monster. You cannot. It ain't designed that way. Even when you say, okay, baby, okay, you cheated. You cheating. You got somebody else. Okay, I, I'll accept that. You can surrender to them. It does not matter. This devil wants you dead. They want to destroy you. They want you destroyed. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you agree to. The answer is going to be no. It's going to be no. The formula is loving yourself and leaving them alone. It's like being dead with them. That's all you got. That's all you got with them. Just a walking corpse. Patrick Means. Thanks for the super chat, champ. Ooh, Patrick said, is that true? That the narc will stop giving the new supply sex after a while? <laughs> and which <laughs> do they <laughs> Patrick listen listen we have this tendency to start thinking that they went and got with somebody else and the other person is winning that's what we think we really believe the other person is winning we believe that the other person is all in and they just getting everything we never got from them because that's the illusion that they want you to believe. That's all strategically put together by the narc. They ran to the new supply and did everything that not only you said you like, but the people before you. It's not just you they're getting back at. They're getting back at everybody and every new entanglement. That's why you look at it. That's why the love bomb feels so good at the beginning. Because they're doing stuff you ain't even never thought about. Like, whoa, wow. I'm really loving this person. But at the end of the day, now nah, not only do does the sex stop, not only does it stop, they, they use it against that other person in the same way. I'm telling y'all, a narcissist is not a sexual person. They're not. It's not a sexual person. They use sex for torture. They use pleasure for the purpose, the sole purpose of tearing you down. That's it. That's something else they got over your head. Oh, yeah, you want some gratification. You need that. that, that this is the bottom line, y'all. We all grown in here. Everybody, all of us need affection. We need intimacy. We need affection. And those are things that you're going to need like during the day. You need affection during the day, even when you're not actually being intimate, when you're not being sexual. You need intimacy during your day. You need somebody calling you, hey, baby. I miss you. Damn, where you at? I, I, I just want to see you. Hit me on FaceTime and, you know, you know, baby, dang, you know, I, wow, I can't wait to see you later. I can't wait to get home. I can't wait to put my arms around you. We need affection. We All of us do. 
I know I'm throwing some of, some of us off, right? Because we ain't used to hearing stuff like that, right? <laughs> Baby, I miss you. I can't wait to see you in, at the end of my day, at the beginning of my day. I can't wait to talk to you. Wow, I'm sending you love letters and texts and all. See, that's the kind of intimacy that all of us really want, that we all really need. You ain't getting none of that, first of all. All that, you can kill that, okay? Yeah, you get at the beginning a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, just a smidgen. Give you a little break, break you off a little smidgen. Mm -hmm. Then the rest of the entanglement, you're looking for that. You, hey, what, what I got to do to get some more of that? What I got to do? I, I'll buy you something. I, I'll fix you some food. I, I'll take you out. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll massage you. I'll do anything you want, baby. Let's just have, let's have that peace. Let me get back to the part where you was where you was loving on me, that intimacy. Get back to that. they like, hey, man, I don't do that. I don't go back to love bombing you again. Where you get that from? No. We already, already did that. No, that's over. They are going to cut. The sex is going to be cut. Listen, the new supply, the new supply is looking at you. Listen, y'all, by the time, if a new supply really is looking at the situation, by the time the narc discards you and goes to the new supply, that new supply is already being tortured. They've already gone through the devalue stage, y'all. They're not in the love bomb stage when the when the narc leaves you. No, no, they're not in the love bomb stage. Then, mm -mm. they have listen. They have to show that they are the type of supply that can handle torture. They have to be able to show it. Okay, you know what that means? That means they're going to be denied sex very early. They're going to be waiting. Would you think they're going to just sex them to death for six months? Not going to happen, y'all. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. No. They need to know right away how this person responds to me saying no, to me turning you down. That's part of the devalue. That's how they started devaluing you. Telling you no. Not today, huh, honey. I'm not right now. I feel I just ate. Or I, you know, I'm I'm tired. I got a headache. I got I just got off work, baby. I'm tired. Dang, go on. You always want it. They gotta break you down in the beginning. They're doing the same thing to the other supply, and they have confidence that the other supply gonna deal with it and take it. Because you're still there. Most of the time, when you don't cut them off, they have the power to just run to this other supply. And they can dump on you. Because they're only going to dump on you when they're dealing with the other supply. They're only dumping. The only time they're nice to you when they're dealing with the new supply is when you don't call and you don't check in. When you're not chasing them around. Then they'll call you acting normal, like, hey, 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 babe, what's going on? And you're like, babe? Yeah, babe. They calling you bay again. They calling you bay because they need the energy that you give them. They need somebody who has no boundaries that they can disrespect on every level they want so that they can run to this other supply and say, hey, I'm all good. I'm all a good person. You know, nothing bad over here. Woo. And what do you think? What do you think is happening after they together for six months? Six months in, y'all, listen, six months in, you knew the narcissist. You knew what they were about. Six months in, you knew who they were. You knew the monster you was dealing with. Six months in, you knew that monster. Okay? Yes, you did. Now, we don't like to just admit that we knew them the way we did, but six months later, listen. Six months in, they, they already getting it. They're already being dragged, but they putting up with it. 
See, a lot of stuff that y'all don't realize is it's just like you. You put up with a whole lot of mess. Somebody else was wondering the exact same thing about you when you were in the entanglement with the narc. And they were like, wow, maybe the narc changed. You were there. You saw they didn't change. You saw and you knew six within six months. Ain't a damn person in these comments that didn't know in six months. Nah, you was getting it in six months. You was already being tortured. You were already being tortured within six months. Okay? Yes, you were. Mm-mm. Ain't no narc out here got six months worth of feel good in them. Ain't no love bomb no six months. I don't know who y'all been listening to. Ain't no slug bomb six months. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Davey Do said if the sex was so bad, why'd you stay? There you go. So many reasons. You know why you stay. Everybody in here knows why you stay. <laughs> That's a great question, don't y'all think? Don't you think it deserves an answer? You stay because you feel sorry for the narc, Davey. That's why. That's why the people stay, because you feel sorry for them. That's the only reason you deal with that sorry, hypocritical, bum, trash, maggot in the first place. Because you feel sorry for them, because they are sorry, because that person is using you. That's why that person is using you and using your good nature, your good will against you. And you actually don't know it yet. That's why people stay. That's why people stay. Because you don't understand that, you know, when somebody's dealing with, you know, a downgrade, you know, somebody who really isn't on their level in the first place, you're feeling sorry for them in the first place and you stay with them because you see that their total character is destroyed and you're trying to help this bum. It's what you're trying to do. That's why they stay. That's why everybody stays because you're trying to help this bum out. Because guess what? Empaths have empathy. We can see somebody is broken. And we actually have the audacity to try to fix this trash. You dig what I'm saying? But soon we learn that it's trash. You can't fix it. Yeah, the sex was bad. It was weak. It was trash. There you go. And, and the thing about it is, usually, y'all, it's only, some people only think that the sex is good with them because everything else was so bad. That's the only time you had with them that you weren't being tortured. You still were being deprived. Whether you're being tortured or not, you're still being deprived. What's up, Nettie? Yeah, so, yeah, we deal with it. But yeah, I don't want any of y'all to think, and I know narcs in here watching, I don't want any of y'all to think that the sex with y'all was something to be bragging about or writing home about. Hell no. No, that it, it, it was trash at best. <laughs> it was trash at best. Okay? In your best day. In your best day, it was trash. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Coach Court, thank you, sir. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. Kanita. Mwah. Thanks, Kanita. Come on in there. Say that you the sex is a weapon. What? <laughs> How when what? How when what they are? Excuse me. How when what they are working with don't work and out of order. See, David, that's the part we really don't want to say. How everything ain't even working right, and I'm, I'm not y'all. Y'all think we just talking about men? We talking about women too? Yeah, ladies, 
Everything don't just work the way, <laughs> man. No, it don't. No, it don't. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all get it. Some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. It ain't all like that. Ain't all like that nowhere. When you're dealing with it, that's all it turns into. You gotta, you gotta do so much. You got to do so much to make it right, to make it worth it. You still willing to work with them even when you see they coming up short in every angle. And see, then you start looking at them and feeling sorry for them because they're coming up short sexually. You start feeling sorry for them and you're thinking that, oh, that's why they're so angry. That's why they're so mean. That's why... They are so belligerent. They're so trashy. They're so disrespectful and disgusting because their sexual part ain't working right or their sex just ain't right. So again, you're feeling sorry for them. You're trying to show them that, hey, you know what? Life, life is still good. Life is still good. You know, I'm going to still love you anyway. You feel sorry for them. I'm going to still love you anyway. I'm going to still be your bright, shiny day. I'm going to still be this for you, be that for you. Yeah, people. <laughs> oh, well, you know, some want to know. Some want to know. Is that Nettie in the house? Is that Nettie? Hey. Nettie! <laughs> What's up, Nettie? Nettie, A.K. Boop, boop, boop. What's up, Nettie? Mwah. Thanks for the super chat, Nettie. I know you came in here. <sighs> we missed you last night. <laughs> Nettie said the love bomb stage gets shorter every time you take them back. Do it last an hour after you get past the third time you take them back. Be like an hour and a half. <laughs> this joker sitting right back out there, right back on their phone, right back doing the same thing they was doing. They right back on the phone doing the same thing they was doing. You taking them back. You can take them back. You know, I mean, you can. Woo. Whew. You say you go from two months to three days. Man, you get three full days of love bomb. Man. Maybe in the beginning. Maybe the well, maybe those are in the beginning stages. <laughs> we talking about somebody you've been for with for a few years. Nah, you don't get no three days. Nah, that's out. Yeah, all of y'all thinking that, you know, that love bomb and Everything's so new over there in the new camp, you know. They just in love and everything about the new person is just, they can't do no wrong. Listen, if the narcissist wanted to be in a good relationship, listen to this, y'all. If they really wanted to be in a good relationship, I'm not going to say that they would have stayed with you. Because they would have stayed with two, three, four people ago. That they were in a relationship, they would have stopped that way, way back and stuck with somebody, the first person that was treating them good. If they really wanted to be in a good relationship, it's not what they're looking for, people. You're looking for relationship. They're looking for supply. They're looking for someone they can use, abuse, misuse, someone they can disrespect, undermine, they can Cross all your boundaries. That's what they're looking for. They're not interested in somebody, you know, some longevity or not interested in that, y'all. They're not. That's not what they're there for. That narc is not there for that. No. They're not there for that. You came for that. You know, you want to wear them, them pajamas, matching pajamas for Christmas. <laughs> Narcissus ain't thinking about that type of stuff. Narcissus is sitting there like, look, man, 
when do I get to start torturing you? That's all we want. That's all we want to know. When does the torture begin? What's up, LaShawn? <laughs> LaShawn said, I was asked <clears throat> if he was abusing me. If he was abusing me, why did I go back? My answer was, I'm two years out of feeling amazing. Again, I'm feeling amazing again. <clears throat> But they don't want to have that conversation and how I let go and never going back. I get it. You going to listen, y'all, we go back. We allow them to come back. Because we're infatuated. We go back, we take them back. We infatuated. We thinking they're going to change. They coming back. They're going to change. Right. Wrong. See, that's where we get it wrong. They're not coming back to, to be in a good situation. They're not coming back to make life good for nobody. No. They're not coming back for that. <laughs> Man, we got the Noxes out tonight. What is going on, y'all? <laughs> the Noxes came in the chat tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What are they doing? They mad. Hey, y'all, the Noxes in the chat, they mad. Why y'all mad though? <laughs> Why y'all mad? Why y'all watching? <laughs> Why you mad though? They they big mad. Woo, they big mad. Yeah, I guess life life didn't, you know, that grass wasn't as green as they thought, was it? <laughs> hey DB, you know we gonna drag them. They coming over here on the out turf too? Oh no, nah, y'all really gonna get it now. You know, I was I was chilling on them when they sit on the sidelines, they gonna come on the field. Nah, we're gonna show y'all just how trifling they are. Look at them. They lifeless. They are lifeless when they watch because they watching you get better. They're watching you get stronger. They're watching you. They're watching. <laughs> Kenny said that grass was brown. <laughs> they got over there. All they saw was it was some different grass. That's all. That's what they see. You take them through the neighborhood. They got their eye on every house in the neighborhood. They got their eye on every house in the neighborhood. Their mind is made up. I'm going to tear somebody's life apart. Because that's who they are. You think they want y'all in here? <laughs> They see the energy in the chat. They big man. Look at them. Scratching their heads, calling names, just petty. Look at them. They because they hurting. They hurting y'all. <laughs> y'all ever heard that expression, the truth hurts? Man, they gotta sit here and listen to this. <laughs> That's got to be torturous. When they do their homework, they listen to this. <laughs> they like, hold up, y'all. This joker is telling too much of the game. He telling too much. I ain't gonna be able to abuse nobody with him telling everybody this. <laughs> man, they are big mad. Why are you mad? Why are you mad? <laughs> oh, would you say millionaire boss give him a virtual hug? Nah, 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 nah. No, nah, we're going to treat them like they the virus. We're going to treat them because they are the virus. They are the virus. They don't deserve no love. They don't deserve no affection. They don't deserve nothing but what they get. And that's what they get. And that's why they here. They here to get some of that karma back. Yeah. They came in just to get some of that karma back because that's all you getting over here. That's all you going to get over here with your trifling self. Yeah, go ahead somewhere and be trifling with it. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's what we gonna do, LaRonda. <laughs> hey, mad mad. Y'all bit mad or a little bit mad? <laughs> they mad. And I'm glad. We glad. We glad. Because we ain't going to none of their meetings. Mm-hmm. We ain't going to none of y'all meetings. <laughs> hey, y'all, look at them. 
<laughs> they big man. We ain't in none of y'all. We ain't come to none of y'all meetings. All mad and disgruntled, and you know, for what? Woo! <laughs> What's up, Patrick? Thanks for the super chat, champ. Appreciate you. Pat said, "My new, <laughs> my dog's new supply moved from another state to move in and left his pregnant girl for my ex. No, left his pregnant." I told y'all, that's the favorite target of a narcissist, y'all. That's their favorite target when they see they want to break up a household. They're gonna the narcissist already know they're gonna break up your household, but they want to break up two of them. See, that's like double jeopardy for them. They're like, Woo, I broke up my house, and now I'm gonna break up that other house over there, too. I'm leaving my family, they're leaving theirs. Woo! And then to get together, and it lasts what? A month, two months? If that just broke everybody's family up, and now they're not even together. It's all about destruction to them, people. It's all about destruction to them. That's it. It's all about destruction. <laughs> say, when, is this, when does the fun begin? Mm-hmm. We say at least. When does it start torturing you? Hey, just give them time. That's right, Sun Cat. They just they destroy families. That's, they, they love destroying a family. That's how you know this is a narcissist, a devil, a foul spirit. That's how you know it's foul. It's dirty. They're disingenuous. It, it, it doesn't, you're never in your life going to meet anything worse than this monster right here. In your life. You will never say you met anything or had a worse situation happen to you. Not worse than this. You're never going to say it. You're never going to be able to say that. Beautiful one. Mwah. Thanks for the super chat, beautiful one. Beautiful one said, had to look at mine like he was Michael Myers. There you go. In order to finally leave. In other words, you stay, you die. That's it, people. Y'all better look at Beautiful One's comment right there. That's the purpose in it. That's what they want. That's what this narc, this devil is looking for. They want you dead. That, that the end game for them is total destruction for you. You're looking at it like you're just going to lose. You're just going to be hurting and this and that. No. They want you in a suicidal state. They want you in a suicidal state. Markeith Lemon. What's up, Markeith? Thanks for the super chat, champ. I said, any advice on healing, the healing process after leaving them alone? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Glow 60 Glow. Absolutely. That's what we're going to talk about. It. Hold up. We're going to talk about that. You better believe it. That healing process. So, first of all, let's talk about the pain. The biggest problem with, you know, dealing with a narcissist, y'all, it's really the end of it. That stuff you're going through in the middle of it, it's bad. But when you get to the end of it, you know, there's so many unanswered questions. There's so many things that you have not uncovered. You did not get closure from that person. Remember that. You're not leaving a relationship with that thing and getting closure. 
You're not going to get truth. Everything that the narcissist says is a lie, has a lie in it. You're not going to have a conversation with that trash and think that everything they said was true. Everything they say has a lie in it. So you might as well to take all of that off the table if you're looking for them for truth. That's our biggest problem. We're looking for the person who tried to destroy us to help us. They're not going to do that. This devil is not going to help you. They want you dead and you don't believe it. You don't believe it. Get away, get away, Nark, and get on the ARC Ministries. There you go, pure evil. They want you dead. They want you suicidal. They want to put you in so much pain where they've destroyed your life, your family, your job, your credit, your bank account, everything around your background, everything around you, your friends, your family. They separated you. They isolated you. They want you in a place where they can totally destroy you. They didn't work that hard just so you could live and talk about it. You think they want me talking about this? Nah, man. I told I came to destroy this devil. I came to destroy you, devil. That's what it is. You ain't getting nothing back. You get nothing but hard. <laughs> this devil ain't getting nothing but a hard way to go. The healing process is going to come from within because that was the one thing that cried out the whole time you were dealing with this evil. Your spirit, your inner voice was crying out to you saying, stop, this person lying, they cheating. They, they, they using you. Your inner voice was telling you the whole time. So that's why the most important thing that you can do is forgive yourself. You owe yourself an apology, number one. You owe yourself an apology because you allowed yourself to go through this and don't say you didn't know anything because your intuition told you. You knew. Your intuition was telling you the whole time. You just wasn't listening. You was hitting that override button. I got it. I got it. I'm cool. We gonna, I'm going to work this out. I'm going to outthink this devil. Woo, man. Said by every empath, I'm going to outthink this devil. Didn't work. Yeah, after you give yourself an apology, give yourself forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Stop dumping on yourself. Stop saying how stupid you are for going through this. You went through it. You did it. It's over. Let it be. You have to learn how to trust this narcissist. You have to learn how to trust this devil. You got to trust this devil. You got to learn how to see and trust this devil that this devil showed you, not told you, but showed you exactly who he is or she is. They showed you exactly who they are. You don't believe them. You don't believe somebody could be that trifling. You don't believe somebody is that dirty. You don't believe somebody realistically in this world. You didn't believe that in your life you would ever meet somebody this treacherous. You didn't think that something like this existed. So you got to trust this devil that it has shown you exactly who it is. It has shown you exactly who it is. See, our problem is we don't we want to get around something. We don't believe it. Nah, they nah, nah, they not that bad. They they don't really want me dead. Nah, nah, I don't believe that. Really? What you think they want you living? You think they just want you out here happy? They ensured every time they was around you that you weren't going to be happy. Try to go around a narcissist and stay happy and see what they do. See what they do. You got to put positive images. You have to put positive tools in place. 
You have to have positive triggers in your life. Things that make you feel positive. You got to be your best friend. Learn how to be your best friend. If you want to heal from this, learn how to be your best friend. Learn how to love yourself. Everybody, I was talking this. I love myself. I love I know. No, you don't. What do you do that shows you love yourself? Oh, I bought myself this the other day. What that got to do with loving yourself? It got nothing to do with loving yourself. You know when you love yourself, y'all? I'm going to tell you, you know when you love yourself. When somebody do something small to you and you recognize it and you check it. When you remember that, I used to, I wasn't like that before. I, I, I'm going to give y'all an example. I, was, I used to be the type of guy, I would go to a restaurant and I don't care what the service was like. I don't care what the, how bad the food was. I still ate it. I still kept it. I still, I didn't even have a problem with it. Right? I went to the store yesterday. I was getting some pizza at the store. Just got off my flight, so I'm, I'm eating some pizza today. I go pick up my pizza. And, you know, I, I look at the pizza I'm like, whoa, hold it, bro. What you mean do I want? Hell no, I don't want that. What I look like. And I wasn't doing it to be mean. But it was clearly that this pizza was overcooked. Dude, I don't want no damn brown pizza. You crazy. Usually I would have been like, I might have taken it before. Usually I probably would have took that home and ate it. Freak it, it's, 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 it's something to eat. That's when you know you're loving yourself. Because you know what? You know you're loving on yourself when you start making sure that everybody around you start treating you a certain way. It ain't cool to mistreat you no more. That's how this process works in your favor. That's how you start to recalibrate yourself and healing in this process. That's, that's healing. When you start demanding that people see you the way you see you, nobody's going to see you other than the way you see yourself. Nobody else out here is going to see you in a way differently than you see yourself. Whatever respect you think you deserve, that's the respect they're going to give you. So whatever level you feel you're on, then that's how you have to carry yourself. It's not about being boisterous, going out here, acting a certain type of way. It's about loving on you. It's about saying, hey, hey, I just spent my money and I'm going to get the service that comes from spending my money or I'm going to get my money back. I'm going to go somewhere else. And it's just that. So it ain't nothing to, to be embarrassing nobody. It's just that's how I am. Okay, you're doing something with me, then this is what I want. I want the best service because I'm the best and I'm spending the best money. Okay? Yeah, fall in love with yourself. Fall in love with yourself. Start treating yourself with respect. Start creating boundaries that you don't let people just cross. See, that's how you know you love yourself when they can't come to you with that old flim flam game Talking about how somebody care about, I care about, I like you, you this, you that. See, they can't just run that game on me. I know my value. That's how you start healing. Assess your value. Take your time. Stop looking at yourself like you got to have another relationship tomorrow. That's what most of our problem is. You think you got to be in a relationship tomorrow. You can't even spend no time with yourself. You can't stand dealing with yourself, but think somebody else supposed to just want to spend all their time with you. Learn how to enjoy your company. But trust me, a happy people love being around happy people. I promise you that. I guarantee you, you date any kind of any person you want when they see that glow on you. You're gonna have your life back the way you want it. Do the work. Do the work. Yes, indeed. Do the work. No, Free Cherie. Thanks for the super chat. No, Free Cherie. Woo! No, Free Cherie said, the no, knock tried me sending me a pic of the new supply and him. He sent you a picture of that? Hell on earth. Woo! Goat mouth, son of a gun. This <laughs> slim pick is now. <laughs> 
Woo! Sent you a picture of him. For what? For what? If he happy, why he don't just go be happy? That don't even make sense at all. Like, dude, y'all sending, oh, I'm going to send you a picture. I'm going to make you mad. Really? <laughs> With that? <laughs> I tell y'all, you know, this is why I tell y'all, you got to go out here and be your best. Go out here and be your best. Be your best you. You know why? Make it hard on that narcissist. When they go make that old desperation pick, you got to let them know. You know, they, they, they left out on some nice flat trim abs and, you know, everything else is in order and tight. And, and, and you just starting to glow because you loving on yourself. You know, you getting you got your money right, getting your credit tight, got everything in your life working in your favor. You gotta make, you gotta make that narc's decision for the way they treated you. You gotta let them know for the rest of their life. <laughs> you gotta let them know for the rest of their life. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, you ain't getting that one back. No indeedy. Nah, ain't no get backs. No get backs. No, no, no. Oh, man, y'all. Hold up, hold up. I missed it. Super chat in here somewhere. Nah, y'all. Ain't no give backs. You ain't, you ain't getting nothing back. Nah, buddy. That's right. Jazzy Underground got my glow back. Yeah. It ain't nothing. It ain't no better feeling than loving on you. Ain't no better feeling than loving on you. It ain't nothing that feel better. It ain't nothing that feel better than you loving on you, y'all. Nothing. Oh, man, I got to talk too long. I'm sorry. I missed you. I'm sorry. Look here, y'all. I'm just here to tell y'all, man. All the narcs watching, man, y'all, y'all might as well go ahead and get a a life change, cause the gig is up, man. It's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It is a wrap for you. Ain't got nothing good for you. Everything for you going to be bad from now on. That's just, you know, karma. That's karma, the universe, the atmosphere. That's what you get. That's what you get. Because that's how we doing it. That's how we doing it. That's right, Deb. No do-overs. No do-overs. Mm-mm. Nah, nah, no do overs. You know, they want to come around us. Y'all see that? They mad. They mad, man. And the reason that they're mad is because they know, listen, y'all, them knocks know once you start seeing them, see, they can only get you when you see them as human. When you see them as yourself, the moment you step out of that, the moment you start seeing a manipulator as a bad, trifling, no good, they know they don't have a chance at getting back. They're not coming back. They're not getting back with nothing like that. No, no, it doesn't work that way. No, you're not getting back in. And see, this is the thing, y'all. They cannot keep it together. I know some of y'all still dealing with them. 
and you're wondering like, man, if they could just get it together, I wouldn't be over here watching her, yo. <laughs> if this fool would just get it together. <laughs> oh man, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. If this fool would just get it together, I wouldn't be watching these videos. But they show you. That's all I'm saying. If you got a good relationship, I'm here to encourage you, you know, because that's what we're all about. You know, being something that where you bless, where you're happy, where you get to smile, where you get to shine. Being that, don't be in something where somebody just, you know, got you by the throat and you trying to figure it out. No, we ain't here for that. We're not here for that. We're here, we're here for the good, y'all. We're here for the good. We're here to encourage one another. That's what we're here, we're here to encourage one another. People going through hard times, you gotta go out here and deal with a hard world. You got COVID out here. You don't know what the hell going on with that. And then you gotta go home and try to figure this fool out at home. You like, man, do I get the shot? Or what's going to happen? I can't go on a vacation nowhere. I can't do this. I'm stuck in the house. And then these kids drive me crazy. And I go to work and these fools. That's designed to make you feel like you're losing your mind, people. And Lord have mercy, don't have no narcissistic parents or relatives to add to it. Man. Woo. Then you start self-medicating. You know, you got to get some cigarettes, some alcohol, some narcotic, sex addiction, food addiction. It happens, man. It happens. Just because you're like, man, I'm trying, I'm trying to hold it. I promise y'all this. When you're in a great relationship, you the one thing you're never going to say again <laughs> One thing you're never going to say again is I'm trying. I'm trying to keep this madness together. That's what you're not going to say. And I know a lot of y'all keep it together because you have children with this thing. I get it. I understand it. I understand it. I, I, I totally get it. I do. But you ain't going to keep that together because y'all got a kid. You ain't going to keep that together because y'all married. You're not going to keep this monster with you. That's how those are the rules. I don't make them. That's just how it is. Rosetta Perkins. Mwah, thanks for the super chat. Takes a good message. Say, I need this so much. Learning how to love me. Listen, y'all, ain't nothing selfish about loving you. Ain't nothing selfish about loving you. They want you to think that. They want you to think that something is wrong with you because you love yourself. Because they can't punish you when you love yourself. They can only punish you when you think that that's being arrogant. Self-love. They can punish you then. Yeah, they can take you through it. And they're going to. What's up, Jason Pittman? Thanks for the Super Chat champ. Appreciate you. Hey, y'all. We're going to keep working on this self-love, y'all. We ain't going nowhere. We're just getting started. We're going to come back in here on Wednesday night. We're going to love bomb ourselves. That's right. Wednesday night is the love bomb. We love bombing ourselves. This thing is about getting us back on track. It ain't about us talking this old crazy narc stuff. We're going to turn narcissists if we love ourselves. No, no, no. You're going to be empathic. Yes, you're going to still love people. Hey, chat. Thank y'all for coming out tonight. Show was incredible. Can we show some love in the chat? Uh-huh. 
Let me show some love in the chat. Let's show some self-love, man. That's what is key out here. That's what we uh, have been missing, y'all. That's self-love, man. That's what we have been missing so the most. We've been missing that self-love. That's right. Let's put some love in the chat. They hate that part. They hate seeing you love on yourself in the chat, people. They hate that part. Like, whoa. They hate it. Keep on doing what we're doing. We're going to keep on loving on ourselves. We're going to keep on drilling this thing into this. No, we're going to drag this trifling, dirty, desperate, destitute, no good, good for nothing, diabolical, <laughs> hypocritical, maggot. We're going to do We're going to drive this thing in the dirt, in the ground every day that we can because it's a war. This is spiritual warfare, y'all. This is spiritual warfare, and that's what we in. And we win. Guess what, Narcs? <laughs> you heard it. We win. We win. We win. We win again. So go ahead back to the overtack air supply. <laughs> Because we win. Oh, that's right. They don't want you neither. <laughs> Most of y'all don't even know. The other supply don't even want that joker no more. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell y'all. We're going to get it in Wednesday night, y'all. All right, 9 o'clock. Same bad time, same bad station. Hey, I want to thank everybody in the chat. I appreciate you. Thanks for all the love. Thanks for loving on yourself. Thank you for loving on you. Thank you for loving on you. Thank you for loving on you. Because it's your turn. It's your light that they are attracted to. It's your light that they are attracted to. You just don't see your light. Thank you for loving on yourself. Everybody that sent in a super chat, thank you. Everybody who came in the comments and did your thing thing. Woo! Y'all did the thing thing. Appreciate your peace and soul train. <sighs> we'll see y'all Wednesday night.